the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am called Ba Omar Cynthia, a mathematics teacher. This lesson is for upper seat science. But before we dive into the lesson, I would like us to look at the assignment in the previous lesson. Write down the Riemann sums of the following definite integrals. So we have a, the integral from 0 to 5 of 4x dx and the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine x dx. Now, from the previous lesson, the integral from a to b of f of x dx in terms of the limit of its Riemann sum is given by the limit as n tends to infinity, the summation from i equal 1 to n of delta x, f of xi, where in this case, delta x is the partition. That is the equal partition of the area covered by that curve. So, if we want to partition our interval, we are at 0 to 5 of 4x dx. So, in this case, our delta x will be given by 5 minus 0, all this on n. So, we want to give it n equal uh, partitions, which is 5 on n. Now, what is the function there? Of course, f of x is 4x. Now, the next thing, how do we get the expression for each of the rectangular strips at any point in time? So, x i is normally x naught plus delta x. Then we look at the integral, we are starting from 0. So, x i is delta x, which is 5 on n. So, this is a particular rectangular strip at any point in time that you can pick, where i varies from 1 right up to, to n. So, if you want to get the length of each strip, we have f of x i. And in this case, it is 4 into 5 on n, which is 20 on, 20 on n. All right. So, if we proceed to apply the formula there, then the integral from 0 to 5 of 4x dx, to write it as the limit of a Riemann sum will be the limit as n tends to infinity, the summation from i equal 1 to n of delta x, which is 5 over n times the f of xi. f of xi, in this case, we have 
twenty over n. So if we do that properly, so this is uh sorry, this is x naught plus i delta x. So this will give us five i on n, and uh, this will give us twenty i on n. So if we do that, we are going to have limit as n tends to infinity summation from i equal one to n of one hundred i on n square. So this is the integral from zero to five of four x dx written as the limit of its Riemann sum. In the previous lesson, you were told that this is the Riemann sum. So we have that. If we proceed to the next problem, the integral from zero to two pi of sine x dx in a similar manner. In a similar manner, delta x is our interval 2 pi minus 0 on n, which is 2 pi on n. So this gives us our n equal partitions of the area under that graph. And uh, xi, x naught plus i delta x. So in this case, we are starting from 0. So we have 2 pi on n i. And uh, if we proceed to apply that formula, we we'll have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine x dx. In terms of its Riemann sums, can be written as now, before this, we need f of x i. So we need f of x i, which will be sine of 2 pi i, all this on n. So we are going to have, um, that is, limit as n tends to infinity summation from i equal 1 to n of delta x. Delta x here is 2 pi on n. So we have delta x and uh, f of x is sine 2 pi i on n. So this gives us the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine x dx as the limit of its Riemann sum. So this is the Riemann sum for the Riemann sum for sine x from 0 to 2 pi. So I want to believe that some of us had this correctly. <laughs> Now we are in lesson 52, use of integration to calculate area. And here we are pre precising on definite integral. Now this is how our lesson will look like. We're going to have an objective, a prerequisite, real life situation, learning activities, application exercises, and uh, assignments. Now, the objectives of this lesson is that by the end, you should be able to express a definite integral as area defined under a curve. And secondly, you should be able to use integration to calculate areas under a curve. Now, for you to be able to better understand this lesson, you should be able to carry out integration as limit of Riemann sums you should be able to integrate standard functions and you should be able to evaluate definite integrals. Now, to test this knowledge, I'd like us to look for the integral of 
cos squared x dx and uh, this 2 integral of x cube on x to the power 4 plus 1 dx so if we start with the first one to integrate cos squared x dx we have to express cos in terms of double angle identity so this can be written as a half 1 plus cos 2x or the dx so cos squared can be written as a half into 1 plus cos 2x and if we do this and carry out our integration we should end up with x on 2 plus that is minus 1 over 2 sine 2x so this is okay plus okay plus 2 plus 1 over 2 sine 2x and uh, number 2 the integral of x cubed over x squared plus 1 dx if you look at this function here that is sorry this is x to the power 4 x to the power 4 all right there is a small issue here sorry now if we if we send this out we have a half integral of 1 plus cos 2x dx and uh, this is a half we carry out this we have x plus 1 over 2 sine 2x two so if we send this inside we have x on 2 plus 1 over 4 sine 2x all right so this gives us uh, the answer and if we proceed with this like i was saying if you study this function you will discover that what is at the denominator is a direct derivative of the numerator so we are with this type of integ integral f prime of x divided by f of x dx which is mean the magnitude of f of x so if we apply this then the answer to this integral is the lean of x to the power 4 plus 1 okay now in the previous lesson we have defined the area under a curve in terms of the Riemann sums and this is what we had from the previous lesson where delta x gives us any equal partitions of the set and the xi is any particular strip at a given point in time. Now, in this lesson, we will look at how to direct definite, how direct definite integration can be used to calculate area, especially for irregular shapes. For regular shapes, we already have formulas that have been given. For example, a square, a circle, triangle. We have their formulas. But what if the shapes are irregular? You cannot tell what they are. Now, this is a real life situation. A surveyor wishes to calculate the area over a piece of land. After proper measurement, he discovered that the land is bounded by the function x into 1 minus 2x together with the x axis he discovered that this line is bounded by this function together with the x axis so how can we help this uh, surveyor 
calculate the area of that piece of land. So, you might not be able to do it, but I believe that by the end of this lesson, we would have seen how you can use integration to calculate the area of that piece of land. Learning activity. Now, consider an area that is bounded by the x-axis, the line x equal a and the x equal b, and the function f of x. So, this is an example of what uh, the activity is, is, is telling us. We have, this is the area bounded by this line, x equal a, x equal b, and the function here is f of x. So, this is what we have, an area that is bounded. Now, split the area into vertical strips and treat each strip as a, being approximately a rectangle. So, if you divide this, uh, this area into smaller rectangular strips with equal width, so in this case the width is the x, take a particular change for all the, 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 the rectangles. Now, let A represent the area of the strips from x to x equal xi. So, at any point in time, x star, sorry, x star can vary. x star can be here. It can be here. It can be here. So, x star varies according to the number of strips you have in your partition. So, we are assuming that we have equal strips with equal width. Now, the area of one strip is approximately that of a rectangle. So, if we consider one strip that is from here to here, and going up, you discover that it gives you an ap approximately a rectangle. And in this rectangle, the width is delta x. The width is delta x. And now the height is given by some y. And that y is given by what? f of x. This means increment in the area as the area is taken one strip at a time is delta a which is y dx. Now we know that the area of a, re a rectangle is length times width. So, if we take a small increment in this area, which is denoted by delta A, just an increment of the area, it should be the same as the length times the width. So, this is what we have here. If you consider it as a rectangle and you consider one increment or an increment in the area, you should have delta A equal Y dx. Now, you discover that if this rectangle, if the width gets more smaller, that is, if dx is becoming more and more smaller, these partitions will give you an approximate of the area to this region that has been bounded by x equal a and x equal b. So now, if you sum all the, 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 the areas, which means you sum the area here, the area here, the area here, the area here, you sum all the areas, it should be approximately the same as what? Summing y dx, because that is length times width, which is approximately the area of one strip. But now you discover that even if you do that, your result will be faulty because we have some places here that are not being considered by the rectangular strip. So to minimize 
our error, we need to make the strip as tiny as possible. So, as delta x gets small, the accuracy of the result increases, which is true. So, as the strips are becoming tiny, that is how you get many more strips in this region that has been bounded, and your results will become more accurate. Which means if we take the limit as delta x is turning to zero of this, it will give us the actual area. Now also, we are saying that if delta a is defined by y dA and uh, dx tends to zero, it becomes the actual derivative of the area with respect to the increment x. So as this dx, delta x tends to zero, we have dA on dx. So, the a on the x becomes y. And uh, if we proceed to carry out integration to be able to get the area, then we are going to have the integral from, the integral over the a is the same as the integral over y dx. And as a result of that, we will have the area under the region that has been bounded as the integral from x equal a to b of y dx. So, this is how you can get the area under a curve or for an irregular shape using integration. You apply the area from a to b of y dx where a and b are the bounds of the region. So clearly we have seen that the total area under the curve can be found in two ways. This either we take the limit as dx tends to zero of the summation of y dx or and the integral as a tends to b of y dx. Example. Find the area bounded by the x-axis the line x equal 0, x equal pi on 2, and the curve x and the curve y equal x plus 2, x plus sine 2x. So to handle this, we have uh, our bounds x equal 0, x equal pi on 2. So if we carry out f of x here, which is equal to y, is, that is, x plus sine 2x. So if we want to get the area bounded by this and this curve, it will be the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x plus sine 2x dx. And if we carry out this integration, we are going to have x squared on 2 plus minus 1 over 2 cos 2x. All this from 0 to pi on 2. And if we do that simplification properly, then we should end up with pi square plus 8 over 8 square units. Okay, we proceed to the next example. Find the area contained between the curve y equal x square, the lines x equal 1, and the x equal 3 and uh, the x axis. So we have our bounds x equal 1, x equal 3, y equal x square. So the area will be given by the integral from 1 to 3 
of x squared dx. And in this case, if we do that properly, we should end with 26 over 3 square units. Exercise. Find the area in the region contained between the curves x squared minus 4, the lines y equal 0, and uh, x equal 4, and the x-axis. Find also the area in the first quadrant bounded by the curve y equal 4x minus x squared, and uh, the x-axis. So this is our application exercises. And uh, if we proceed to solve, we have we have the first case. We should know our bounds. Y equals zero. Y equals zero means that x square minus four is equal to zero which means that x plus 2, x minus 2, this is difference of 2 squared, is equal to 0, and x is equal to negative 2, or x is equal to 2. And now we are told that this is, uh, the next bound is at x equal 4. So, it means that the bounds are x equal 2 and uh, x equal 4. So, the area becomes integral from 2 to 4 of x cubed. Sorry. Of x squared minus 4. All this dx. This gives us x cubed over 3 minus 4x from 2 to 4. So, if you look at this, gives us a representation of the curve y equal x square minus 4. Because you might be wondering, why did we choose 2? and not negative 2. So if we take negative 2, the bound between, we have a bound between 2 and 4 because the curve passes and there is an area beneath it. So 2 is the best possible uh, bound that we can take as compared to negative 4. So if we carry out this integration properly, we should end up with 32 over 3 square units from, if you simplify this, then you should have 32 over 3 square units for the area of that region. Now the second example, find the area in the first quadrant bounded by the curve that under the x axis so to get our boundaries oh now let's look at the graph it's good to have a picture of how how the graph looks like to be able to know where the region is found so if we look at this graph this is the graph of uh, f of x equal 4x minus x squared so we have a bound at 0 and uh, 4 and this is the region that we are looking for the area which means at at the x-axis y is equal to 0 so at the x-axis at the x-axis y is equal to 0. So, 4x minus x squared is equal to 0. So, that is why we are solving this equation to be able to get the bound.
So if we carry out this integration from um, that is from 2 to 4, okay, now we are carrying out the integral from 0 to 4, 0 to 4, of 4x minus x squared, all this dx. So this will be um, 2x squared minus x cubed over 3 from 0 to 4. So if we do that, so this is uh, for the previous question, this for the previous question. So if we do that and we substitute 4 squared 16, so that is that gives us 32 and uh, 4 cube, 4 cube that is 64 divided by 3. So this should give us 96 minus 64 divided by 3. So we should end up with 32 on 3. Okay, so it means that what the problem we had here is just our limit from 0 to 4. So you end up with 32 on 3. We move to application exercise. Find the area in the region bounded by y equal e to the x, x equal 0 and x equal 2. And also, we have y, y equals 0 and x axis. So, if we look at the first case, e to the x, this is the graph of e to the x, bounded from 0 to 2. So, to get the area in this region, we carry out the if we carry out the integration from 2 to 4 since the region is from that is from 0 to 2 so we have from 0 to 2 this should give us e square minus 1 square unit if you do that appropriately now, the graph of the region bounded by 7x minus 3 minus 2x squared, y equals 0 and the x axis. Now, at the x axis, y is equal to 0. So we have the bounds at a half and a 3. So if we have a look at the graph of 7x minus 3 minus 2x squared, we have the bounds from a half right up to 3. So we will be integrating from a half to 3 of that function y. And if you do that properly, you should end up with 413 on 24. Now recall the real life situation where we are to help this surveyor. We have a function x equal y equal x 1 minus 2x and uh, we have the x axis and we also bound it by okay together with the x axis so we have at the x axis we have y equal 0 which means that x is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 and uh, x is equal to 1 over 2. So we will be integrating from 0 to 1 over 2, the area of that region. So this of x into 1 minus 2x dx. And this will give us x squared on 2 minus x 
going. If we expand that, we are going to have integral from 0 to a half of x minus 2x squared. And this will be the same as the integral from 0 to 1 over 2 of x squared on 2 minus 2x cubed on 3. That is from 0 to a half. And if we carry out this simplification, if x is 0, it goes off. If x is a half, we are going to have 1 over 8. And uh, we are going to have minus 2 over 24. 2 over 24. And if you simplify that correctly, you should end up with, that is, LCM 24, this is 3, so you should end up with 1 minus 1 divided by 24 square units. Assignment. Find the area in the region bounded by y equal x e to the x square, x equal 1 and x equal 5, and b y equal 2 to the x, x equal 0, x equal 4, and the x axis. Now, the next lesson will be use of integration to calculate area. Unna tege si, ma tege yop Unna tege minga, ma tege nyum Unna tege majang, ma tege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen Ngani bana, ma tege mot Ngani lakiri, wa tege ndong Esa kina, bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen.